Did modern humans cause the extinction of the hobbits of Flores Island? The tiny hominids died out suspiciously close to when Homo sapiens arrived in the region. Moreover, the mystery hominin species is raising huge questions about human evolution, and the evidence mounts over why our tiny relatives went extinct. Thousands of years ago, hobbits roamed a lush green island. They gathered food, took shelter in cozy caves, hunted pygmy elephants and battled dragons. But this is no fantasy, it's the true life of our ancient human cousin, that thrived on the island of Flores in Indonesia. Discovered in 2003, Homo floresiensis stood about three and a half feet tall, about 1.1 meters, and weighed around 75 pounds, about 35 kilograms. Nicknamed for the diminutive heroes in Tolkien's famous novels, the real-life hobbits made stone tools, and might have survived predatory attacks from Komodo dragons. Even more exciting to anthropologists, the discovery originally estimated that these hobbits lived as recently as 30,000 years ago, which would mean that they outlived Neanderthals, and might well have crossed paths with modern humans. However, the latest evidence suggests that hobbits vanished from the island earlier than thought, casting the chances of a cross-species encounter in a new light. An analysis, published in Nature, asserts that the skeletal remains of Homo floresiensis are more likely between 100,000 and 60,000 years old, and their stone tools date from as far back as 190,000 years to around 50,000 years ago. That suggests these evolutionary sidekicks did not exist for long after modern humans arrived in the region. But age is just one of many bones of contention regarding Homo floresiensis. Since the initial discovery, at least six additional hobbits have been exhumed in the cave, and biological anthropologists have been wrestling with issues ranging from how they first migrated to Indonesia, to the reasons for their diminutive size, to whether they even qualify as a unique human species. Consequently, every finding just makes it more mysterious. Nobody could ever have imagined a hominid that looked like the one from Flores, and it's the kind of thing only Mother Nature could come up with. The hobbits of Flores created an uproar among anthropologists, causing them to question assumptions about evolution and human origins that had held sway for more than half a century. Some anthropologists say that it would have been impossible for a hominid with a brain the size of an orange to make the sophisticated tools found at the cave, let alone hunt with them, and that they must have been crafted by modern humans. And when researchers analyzed the hobbit wrist, they found a primitive bone common to great apes and early hominids but not to Neanderthals and modern humans. That fits a theory that hobbits are less closely related to Homo sapiens than to Homo erectus. The hobbit was a wing in human evolution that we didn't know about. There is no reason that 800,000 years of experimentation could not evolve a small but advanced brain. Indeed, the Flores hobbit remains an unanswered evolutionary puzzle. The ancient human has taken evolutionary biologists on a very unexpected journey, because the hobbit has no ordinary skeleton. Although parts of its anatomy resembled those of very ancient humans, dating analysis puts the skeleton at about 30,000 years old. That means the seemingly primitive species lived at the same time as modern humans. In other words, the hobbit appears to be the last surviving human species, aside from our own. But why is the hobbit so strange-looking? At first, archaeologists suspected they were looking at the bones of a modern human child. But closer analysis changed their tune. Older hominins, such as the 3.2 million-year-old Australopithex afarensis, have strong jaws, flared hip bones and short legs. Those same features show up in Homo floresiensis. The hobbit's small skull indicates that the species had a brain the size of another ancient species, Homo habilis, which lived 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago. The hobbit also possesses the furrowed brow ridges, thick skull and brain structure of Homo erectus, which appeared nearly 2 million years ago. As the researchers delved deeper, it became clear that Homo floresiensis had a curious mix of modern and primitive traits. It's kind of like there was this laboratory of human evolution that had been occurring on planet Earth, that we didn't even know about. 
Perhaps the most widely accepted scenario is that Homo floresiensis evolved from a version of Homo erectus. Coincidentally, Homo erectus remains have turned up on the nearby Indonesian island of Java. The earliest Homo erectus fossils unearthed outside of Africa, at Manasai in Georgia, have also shown that these hominins were not always the large strapping specimens we thought they were. The Manasai hominid are smaller and retained some primitive features. Though, as many believe, Homo erectus are likely still our direct ancestors. This all hints that a group of early Homo erectus could have made its way to mainland Southeast Asia, and a population could have then been stranded on Flores and given rise to the Hobbit. But could the Hobbit's origins be even older? Given the similarities in anatomy to both Australopithecus, it's possible that the Hobbit had an older ancestor. If that were the case, we'd need to rethink the spread of ancient humans out of Africa. It would mean that a whole branch of the human evolutionary tree in Asia has been missing. However, an Australopithic species probably couldn't have made the trek from Africa across Asia to Indonesia, because it isn't until the rise of Homo erectus that we see legs strong enough for walking long distances. And how did the hobbit get so small? The leading theory suggests that the ancestor of Homo floresiensis may have been subject to island dwarfism. Islands come with a unique set of evolutionary pressures, among them limited and sometimes unreliable resources. To compensate, some animals evolve smaller body sizes, that require less energy to maintain. If you want to survive on an island, you have to basically shrink down all of the organs of the body that are expensive. Animal remains unearthed with Homo floresiensis included a dwarf species of primitive elephant, called a stegodant, along with Komodo dragons. Initially, researchers questioned whether island dwarfism could indeed shrink the brain to the degree seen in Homo floresiensis. But a study found that in hippos undergoing island dwarfism on Madagascar, the brain gets disproportionately smaller than the body. A big brain requires a lot of expensive upkeep, so it makes sense that the brain might be subject to stronger evolutionary pressures. But how did the hobbit get to Flores? Even during the last glacial maximum, when sea levels dropped drastically, Flores would not have been accessible from other Indonesian islands, or mainland Southeast Asia. This means that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis would have needed a boat or raft, or been very good swimmers. Though not out of the realm of possibility, a population of early Homo erectus may have got stranded on a micro-island that connected to Flores from Bali. This is actually not uncommon in large volcanic eruptions. The island of Flores and Bali are essentially large volcanic islands, just like the Hawaiian Islands. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do me a favor and click that big red button now, so you don't miss any groundbreaking content. But what finally killed off the hobbits? Researchers looked at the composition of the fauna and other artifacts that were found on Flores from 190,000 years ago, including thousands of animal bones and stone tools. This allowed them to build up a picture of what was happening on the island, in terms of the types of animal and human species that lived there, and how abundant they were. Researchers discovered that there was a major shift in the paleoecology of the island, and the subsequent behavior of the hobbits. Most notably, they found a huge volcanic eruption, that took place around 50,000 years ago, coincided with the disappearance of Homo floresiensis and three other large species found on Flores, including giant storks, vultures and dwarf elephants. By 46,000 years ago, these creatures were no longer present on the island. With the elephants gone, the hobbits lost a major food source. The sediments reveal the huge volcanic eruption caused a pyroclastic flow, a cloud of hot gas and rocks that swept over the ground. These tend to be the most devastating, because they destroy and burn everything in their path. Successive volcanic eruptions probably had a major influence on how Homo floresiensis responded to the climate of Flores, and may well have played a role in the species' extinction. Potentially, the eruption disrupted the ecosystem making it harder for Homo floresiensis to survive. Researchers note that the dwarf elephants, which had a body mass of about 570 kilograms and were about the size of a small cow, 
likely formed an important part of the diet of Homo floresiensis. If they disappeared as the result of the volcano, it could have caused a domino effect on the rest of the ecosystem. Eruptions disrupt the ecosystems on the island still today. There have been earlier turnovers where you lose stegodont and then you get a different species recolonizing. It's possible, then, that the hobbits were driven extinct as an indirect consequence of the volcanic eruption. But Flores is a volcanic island and the elephants, and hobbits, had survived many eruptions. Generally, ecosystems recover quite quickly, within decades. Perhaps climate change was a factor instead. We know that in the broader region of Southeast Asia, climate changes put these larger animals at risk. However, volcanic eruptions may have just been part of the story. The biggest clue comes from the stone tools. Before 50,000 years ago, the tools were mostly made from volcanic rock, called silicified tuff. After 50,000 years ago, the tools were mostly made of chert. Modern humans preferred using chert, so this may be evidence that our species had arrived on Flores. Though no direct evidence shows any interaction with modern humans, it is possible that these ancestral cousins could have crossed paths, perhaps with disastrous consequences. There is a pattern where ancient kinds of hominids that have been doing perfectly well for a very long time disappear as soon as Homo sapiens shows up. For one reason or another, Homo sapiens is a uniquely deadly species, and modern humans were perfectly capable of causing a mass extinction on their own. And the new estimates for hobbit extinction coincide suspiciously with the arrival of modern humans in that area. Island populations are always under threat due to fluctuations in food supply, and it could be that Homo floresiensis went extinct on its own, but it also happens to coincide with the moment in time when Homo sapiens was in the region. It could be that humans arrived around the same time as the volcanic eruption, and either killed off Homo floresiensis directly, or they decimated the larger fauna on the island, including the dwarf elephants and giant storks, leaving the island natives with little chance of survival. If modern humans and the hobbits overlapped on Flores, did they interbreed? It is doubtful, because humans and hobbits are more distinct than modern humans and Neanderthals. It all comes down to evolutionary distance. A study examined the genomes of modern pygmies living on Flores, and found no unidentified hominin DNA, so there is no smoking gun.